The IRS scandal may pack more political punch due to its targeting of conservative groups, but the AP scandal engulfing the administration cuts deeper to the heart of press freedoms and the media's ability to hold those in power accountable. At yesterday's briefing, Attorney General Eric Holder defended the DOJ's investigation of the AP on grounds of national security, saying the leak put the American people at risk. Of course, governments always defend their actions on the grounds of national security, and the press usually defends its pursuit of information on the basis that Americans have a right to know what is being carried out in their name. But the AP notes a pattern in particular with the current White House. The Obama administration has brought six cases against people suspected of providing classified information, more than under all previous presidents combined. And when it comes to leaks, they don't come any bigger than WikiLeaks, which in 2010 released hundreds of thousands of secret U.S. documents and diplomatic cables on the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. WikiLeaks is the subject of documentary filmmaker Alex Gibney's new feature, We Steal Secrets, the story of WikiLeaks, which chronicles the information war waged by WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange against the U.S. government. In April 2010, Assange released this classified video showing a 2007 U.S. Apache helicopter strike in Baghdad dad that killed civilians, including two Reuters cameramen. That was followed by the release later that year of thousands of classified Afghanistan and Iraq war documents exposing previously unknown civilian casualties in both conflicts. These unsanctioned releases led to the administration to call Assange a danger to national security and a man with, quote, blood on his hands. The battlefield consequences of the release of these documents are potentially severe and dangerous for our troops, our allies, and Afghan partners, and may well damage our relationships and reputation in that key part of the world. Mr. Assange can say whatever he likes about the greater good he thinks he and his source are doing, but the truth is they might already have on their hands the blood of some young soldier or that of an Afghan family. Back to today, the DOJ's monitoring of the AP goes beyond the walls of America's largest journalistic institution. The New York Times public editor explained the stakes, writing, this isn't just about press rights. It's about the right of citizens to know what their government is doing. In an atmosphere of secrecy and punishment, despite the hollow promises of transparency, that's getting harder every day. Joining the panel now is the director of We Steal Secrets, the story of WikiLeaks, filmmaker Alex Gibney. Alex, I'm a huge fan. Thanks for joining the program. Pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. And especially in uh, this moment in particular, it seems like the right conversation to be having about transparency and national security. Um, in your expert opinion, how much did WikiLeaks sort of lay the foundation for a White House that is ever less transparent and more sort of in dogged pursuit of leakers? Well, I don't think... WikiLeaks laid the foundation for that. I mean, I think 9-11, in a way, laid the foundation for an increasing grab of executive power and an obsession with not only surveilling, but also keeping secrets. And then now the Obama administration has kind of ratcheted it up in terms of prosecuting leakers. Are you surprised at sort of the broad consensus in and around Assange or and or Manning as being sort of seen as enemies or at least not championed? I mean, at the beginning of WikiLeaks, there was some sense that here was a real uh, sort of fighter for freedom and transparency and an openness in government. And these days, they have been increasingly vilified. That's right. Well, I think in particular, Assange, I mean, look, at the beginning, uh, the administration was embarrassed, and I think properly so, because a lot of materials were leaked. And I think the administration was looking for a way to remove WikiLeaks and Assange from uh, the cover of the New York Times, The Guardian, and Der Spiegel, the German magazine. And it, they found that way by looking at the fact that he hadn't properly redacted some names on the WikiLeaks website. You know, uh, it's interesting, Caddy, in, in, the, in, the, in the video, that we, in some of the clips we just played, the notion of blood on, uh, blood on his hands, the idea that somehow Julian Assange has blood on his hands, which is a distraction from the fact that there are actually people in the U.S. military who do have blood on their hands. <coughs> and the, the notion that somehow the leakers have been implicated as the villains here, and we aren't asking ourselves the tough questions about what we're doing overseas, whether through drones or whether through having, you know, indeterminate detention at Gitmo, what we need to do on a practical level to actually avoid having blood on our hands. Yeah, you're right. And partly because of the character, I think. I mean, I don't know, you know what Alex would say about this, but because of the sort of self-aggrandizing character of Julian Assange, I mean, it's been very easy to vilify him rather than to ask those questions about what is it that we uh, expect our men and women to do when they go to the front lines of battle? What is it that is happening to civilians who get caught up in battle? Is there more that the U.S. military could be doing to avoid 
uh, scenes like the one we just saw with the Reuters cameraman. Um, and, and those questions somehow have got lost in, the, in this kind of character of this guy who uh, is so easy to dislike, frankly. I mean, I mean it, well, whatever good he may or may not be doing, he himself, I think, has done a disservice. I don't know, Alex, what you'd say about that. Unfortunately, perhaps to the cause of freedom of, of information. Well, I think the problem with Assange was that he became too associated personally with WikiLeaks and the whole transparency. But he wanted agenda. to. He did. And that, that occasioned the fame. There was a brief moment where it allowed WikiLeaks to become more famous, but I think it ultimately had a terrible downside and discredited, in fact, the organization as a result because it wasn't so much about uh, transparency as it was about Julian Assange suddenly. And that was too bad because in point of fact, when, when the Reuters, uh, I mean, when the video was released and when the Afghan war logs were released and when the Iraq war logs were released, suddenly there was a transformation of discussion about these wars and what had been hidden from us. That's where the focus should have been. And unfortunately, too much of the focus shifted to Assange. I think in part because the administration wanted to shift the focus. Of course. They, they found a, of course. They, and, and that's how they're dealing with man too, I would say, because they're looking to find a way to scapegoat Manning yeah. and say, this guy is the problem. Make him an oddball. Yeah, they try to, yeah, if we focus on the messengers, if we focus on these people, we don't have to have the big, hard discussions. And I think that's absolutely right. Well, and, and you know, this, there, are the, there are these moments. I mean, the Gitmo is one, well, we're going to have a conversation about that later on in the show. But, Heather, we go through these periods where we talk about our counterterrorism activities and our national security concerns. And we most recently did that with drones. But then it sort of never leads anywhere. And in the meantime, you know, the administration continues onwards. And I wonder to what degree, you know, that has been a failure on the part of the left, on the part of the media to actually have the, have the hey, begin the conversation and also hold those in leadership positions accountable. I will read uh, an excerpt from an interview with Jonathan Landy, who was works for McClatchy, and they did one of, the, I th think, the best pieces of reporting about U.S. drone strikes um, and the inaccuracy of U.S. drone strikes. And he writes, I can, or he says, I can tell you that people who normally would meet with me sort of in a more relaxed atmosphere are on pins and needles, Landy says of the reporting climate during the Obama years. The crackdown on leaks, he added, seems deliberately intended to have a chilling effect. There is that word chilling again. <laughs> but this is, yeah. you know, we are talking about the Obama administration and someone who came into office with promises of a more transparent government ending uh, the abuses that sort of began to be put into practice under the Bush administration. I think it's been very difficult. I think we, you're right. We are talking about a constitutional lawyer who came in, who's do, who did in the Senate and still does support a shield law to protect reporters from prosecution when they receive um, classified information. And yet, I do think that the president has been hemmed in on the one side by Republicans who are looking for any excuse to paint a Democrat as soft on the war on terror and the urgencies of what information that I that I will never have privy to what is facing him and the administration every single day in terms of threats and so I'm not at all excusing the the basic sort of lack of not just the bully pulpit but some some basic measures that he could do to have moved the agenda forward the agenda that he carried in the Senate up until uh, he became a candidate for for president that I think we could see some movement on that and we absolutely and I'm really glad that we're talking about it must see the closing of Guantanamo I, I just want to pivot off something Heather said about the bind Obama's and I think it's important every once in a while to pull back and realize that whether we're talking about Bush or whether we're talking about Obama and his administration we ask of our government something sort of impossible. We ask them to keep us safe, and then we ask them to do it without doing anything that would make us embarrassed or compromise our national integrity. I'm not sure that is an order that's truly executive. executive. Well, and, and we no, ask them to do it in a hyper-partisan environment, and we're seeing it right now today. So we, we, the, the president is, is accused on one hand of coddling terrorists, and on the other hand accused by now of re Republicans are accusing him of stepping all over the First Amendment. I mean, and in some ways, if he, what, if he was more sort of sympathetic to transparency in government and, you know, they didn't sort of vilify WikiLeaks, perhaps then he would be get a, getting attacked from the right flank as being soft on national security and terror. I mean, that is one consideration to make, Alex. Yeah, I mean, look, I think he is in a tough spot. All presidents are in a tough spot. It's not an easy job. <laughs> but, but the fact of the matter is that doesn't mean anybody should stop talking about this tension. And it's a natural tension in a democracy between national security. I would say I would define that differently than the national interest, which is broader. National security and the need to know certain things. The distressing thing, though, about the Obama administration is 
he's great. President Obama is great at talking the talk, but really he hasn't been so good at walking the walk, both on civil liberties and in things like closing Guantanamo. And he's used um, the threat of, you know, uh, 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 sort of a, a hyper partisan Republican Congress to say that this is why he needs to do what he needs to do. But we're learning, actually, that he has all sorts of executive powers that he's asserting because he can and because he's actually spinning off of things that the Bush administration did in ways that I think are disconcerting. It has more to do with the nature of the institution. And I think as journalists, we have to fight back to say, you know, the executive is taking too much power. Yeah, I think, I mean, to say that President Obama is in a bind and was kind of pushed by a part partisanship into adopting the approach to the war against terrorism that he has done is slightly letting him off the hook. I mean, he is the one that has aggressively stepped up the use of drone strikes, is still outsourcing terror suspects to third parties who may or may not be treating them in line with the way that Americans might think is acceptable. I mean, his approach to the war on terrorism has been, I don't, this is a White House that really does not want American boots on the ground, that has pulled them back, and the convenient way, therefore, to prosecute the war on terrorism is to outsource it to drones and to other people doing your dirty work for you. And that's definitely the choice of this White House. Well, we have to take a short break, but when we come back, we will have more on Alex, Alex Gibney's new film and the complicated, the complicated questions concerning freedom, morality, and security. That's next.